Would you like to be in the video today? Wanna? <gasps> yeah! Okay! <laughs> Hello fellow plant people! Welcome back! Uh, my name is Jen. If you are new to this channel, I go by the Leafy Geek here and also on Instagram. Um, and then, of course, if you are returning, welcome back. Good to see you. I was trying to film on the floor with the star of this video who has decided every time I press the record button, she wants to bolt and run away and find something else to do. So she is currently right here behind my giant cast iron plant taking a nap. So that's, that's where we're at. So I thought today I would share with you some of my favorite pet safe plants. This is an area that's pretty important to me. Um, just as a dog mom, I want to know that the plants that I have that might be within her vicinity are safe for her in the event she decides to get adventurous and take a little chomp of something. She doesn't. I should make a note that she really leaves my plants alone. I've not encountered any incidents of her, you know, getting into plants, digging, knocking things over, you know, chewing on, on leaves or anything like that. Um, she was trained pretty well as a puppy to avoid things that she wasn't supposed to um, chew on. And so she kind of knows where her boundaries are. If you have a pet that doesn't know their boundaries quite yet or you're still working on that with them. Um, these are some of my favorites that I you know would would recommend um, taking a look at if you haven't already um, as far as plants that you would like to have in your home and also give you the peace of mind um, that if they are around your pet or in the area where your pet lives or plays that um, likely you know they won't be negatively affected um, if they encounter the plant. Disclaimer with that though, and this is something that the ASPCA um, has on their website, they have a great link um, or a great resource for toxic and non-toxic houseplants um, for pets, dogs, and cats. Um, but they also do have a disclaimer that, you know, any plant can cause adverse reactions with your pet, if it's like gastrointestinal, stomach upset, diarrhea, you know, other unfavorable um, symptoms from consuming that plant. So any plant can have an effect on any pet. It depends on the pet, depends on, the, you know, the plant. Um, these are listed on their non-toxic list though. Okay, it's a couple hours later. I am set up in a different space because I filmed a little bit with the light that was going on um, in my office area and it was just not working. Um, so we took a break, waited for the light to change a little bit, and for someone to settle down, you can check out those outtakes at the end of the video. <sighs> I am not an expert. That is disclaimer number one. Just wanted to put that out there. Please do your own research before getting certain plants. I am giving you the information that I learned um, and acquired from doing my research primarily off of the ASPCA website. So I strongly encourage you to take a look for yourself. Don't take anyone's word for it and just see what, you know, see what they have to say. It's an excellent resource. Um, and you can get a sense of what might work in your home and what will work for your for your pet. I also wanted to mention, um, this is disclaimer number two, before we get started on my um, recommendations for pet safe plants, that I need to just put it out there that I also have pet, uh, plants in my home that are toxic for dogs or cats. I have a few aeroids in my home, so philodendrons, skindapsis, um, ZZ plants, and then also snake plants, so the, um, the Sansevieria slash Dracaena um, genus. Um, I do have a few of those in my home as well. However, 
I'm intentional about the placement of those plants in my home and I try and make sure that they are as far removed from hound dog space as they can possibly be. So I have them up high, I have them on tables that are well out of her, her reach. Uh, I just, I don't want to even chance it. Um, so that's kind of my approach there. Um, so the plants that are deemed pet safe or animal safe via the ASPCA website, I have in places in my home that are potentially accessible to her. Um, but at the same time, again, just need to stress that any plant can have some sort of adverse reaction with your animal. Depends on the animal, on the pet. Um, you always want to just monitor your pets if you can when they are around um, plants or when they have access to your plants. And always just keep an eye out. So now we are going to talk about some of my favorite hound dog safe plants. We're going to start with a couple of runners up. First plant I want to talk about is the parlor palm, known um, botanically as Camellidoria elegans. This is a diminutive little palm, commonly found. You can find this in a lot of nurseries. You can also find this in a lot of big box stores. So it's a very common house plant. And um, I've had this one for the better part of a year, I would say. And it hasn't grown much but it hasn't declined at all. So it just kind of hangs out in the lower light area of my home that I have it. I do have it a little bit lower. I have it sitting on a low level kind of coffee table. And so it is within Hound Dog's reach if she so chose to explore it. Um, but again, she tends to just ignore them for the most part. Um, but this is one that I am comfortable having um, in a lower, area of my home on a lower table or space. Next up, the ponytail palm. So you guys might know, those of you who've seen my other videos, this one is not my favorite. Uh, sort of ambivalent about it, but the one thing, and probably part of the reason why I did pick this up um, when I did get it, was that it is pet safe. It is on the ASPCA website for non-toxic plants for pets. And again, it's a relatively easy plant to take care of. Um, infrequent waterings. I let the soil dry almost completely out um, before I water it. And you can tell these little caudexes um, will start to kind of shrink and get a little bit wrinkly and, but, and a little bit soft. And then you know it's time to go ahead and give these a drink. Um, I am going to bonsai this. I've decided that I'm going to take some initiatives to maybe make it into a plant that I would get more enjoyment out of because right now it's very unruly. Um, one thing to keep in mind with these two is that these leaves, if you run your fingers up the wrong way on them, you will risk a serious ouch um, because they are kind of serrated, the edges of the leaves are serrated, and so if you run your fingers up the wrong way too hard, um, you will get cut. And so keep that in mind too if you have like a cat or a dog that likes to chew on things because it does look and resemble grass quite a bit. Um, you, they can hurt the insides of their mouths if they go to town on these, so just kind of keep that in mind. But this is non-toxic. Last runner up on my list of favorite pet save plants is the Calathea. So all Calatheas are non-toxic. They're um, specifically this one is found on the ASPCA site or on the list for the non-toxic plants. Um, it's interesting when you go onto that website you will see that a lot of plants listed are singular. So you'll find one or maybe a couple of plants tops from a certain genus. Um, generally speaking, the assumption is that all plants in that genus that are directly related to the plants that are listed are also 
safe. If you have any questions about any type of plant, recommend talking to your vet um, or finding more information elsewhere if possible to kind of um, triangulate those resources and confirm. Um, but you will see that, you know, not every single species of Calathea or every single species of Hoya or Peperomia are on that list. Just to keep that in mind. So this being one of the pet safe plants, I do, you know, have a few of these. I probably also got those for this, for that reason. Um, have a love-hate relationship with Calathea. This one, um, I did feature in a video a little while ago mentioning that it really was struggling this winter. This particular Calathea right here was one that was struggling a lot with crisping of the leaves. The leaf edges were turning really brown and crispy. Um, and I ended up having to cut quite a bit of it back because it just wasn't doing well. But, um, I have moved this in my home. I have it on, again, a lower kind of coffee table area, similar to where my parlor palm is. Um, moved that there. It gets some, it's in a west facing window, but it's also partially blocked by other plants. So it's got some kind of dappled light going and it's pretty good bright light. Um, it's also near a humidifier and I literally set it there and then kind of ignored it um, for a few days, a couple, maybe even a week. I just kind of left it there and walked past it one day and saw like nine or ten new leaves poking out of the soil. Hi. Next plant on my list of preferred non-toxic plants for pets is my chlorophytum, my spider plants. So chlorophytum is an interesting uh, genus because it also, you know, it includes the spider plant, um, kind of your garden variety, very commonly found plant. Um, if this doesn't float your boat, you can find relatives of the common spider plant that might be a lot more interesting. For example, I have this chlorophytum, let's see if I can get the name right here, this chlorophytum philopendulum subspecies amiensa, am, am, amaniensa. Try that again. Chlorophytum philopendulum subspecies amaniens. This is also known as the fire flash plant or the mandarin plant. You've seen this as sometimes probably. And again, it's a relative of the traditional spider plant. It is also pet safe. This one's really beautiful. I love the orange petioles. I think if you get these into brighter light, the orange becomes really vibrant. Mine hasn't grown overly much because I've had it in relatively low light, but I have moved it to kind of the front of a window. It is in a north facing window. Both of my spider plants are, um, but they are right up against the window now. So I will see how they do. I'm excited to see if this will, will continue to grow for me. Next up on my list of favorite pet safe plants that I have in my collection anyway, is the Cissus rhombofolia elendanica. This is a member of the grape family. This is closely related to grape ivy, the traditional Cissus rhombofolia. This variety, also known as the oak leaf ivy, as you can see, has leaves that still have the kind of the triple leaf shape like a grape ivy would have. They just have the serrated leaves that resemble oak leaves, which is where it gets the name oak leaf ivy. So this is, for an ivy, pet safe. A lot of ivies you'll find out there, like the, the English ivy or the hetera um, varieties, are not. Um, they are actually toxic. So this is a nice kind of dupe or alternative if you like kind of the sprawling, rambling, branchy look of ivy, um, but really want to keep in mind that you have um, pets in your home that might get interested in it. <laughs> I 
There's a creeper in the background. Hey, creeper. How you doing? Oh, come here. Come here. You're the star of this video. Why don't you come? <laughs> Why don't you sit? So these, of course, you recognize as Peperomia. This particular one is the Peperomia obtusifolia. So Peperomia obtusifolia um, is one of several species of Peperomia that you can acquire and collect. And Peperomia are pet friendly, according to the ASPCA. So they are, you know, easy to grow, um, don't require a lot from you. Just watch the watering. Uh, make sure you don't overwater them. I water mine when the soil is almost completely dry. And the leaves also for, for these because peperomia are fairly. <laughs> what are you doing? Totally pet safe. Don't lick the leaf. Thank you. So peperomia, easy to care for. Don't require a lot of high light or, you know, humidity. Um, regular household humidity is fine. And then just watch the overwatering. And yeah, another good option. I have probably close to 30 different varieties of Peperomia in my home. A lot of them too are accessible to the hound if she so chooses. What are you whining about? She has to go outside. Next up on my list, pet safe plants, is the Ripsalis, um, or also commonly known as mistletoe cactus. That is how it appears on the ASPCA website. Um, and again, it's one of those where, you know, there are many, many species of Ripsalis. Only one is listed on the website. So if you have any questions at all about a certain type of plant that you have that belongs to the Ripsalis family or any other jungle cacti, definitely recommend investigating a little bit further um, or talking to your vet. I have several species of jungle cacti, some that are also in different genuses, so um, Epiphyllum, um, Lepismium, those I am less certain about um, in terms of their safety. So I want to always verify that information before I put it within reach of Hound Dog. So Ripsalis, I'm fairly confident because there is one listed that were she to ingest a piece of a Ripsalis plant, likely wouldn't be too um, adversely affected by it. Again, depends on the dog um, or the cat. You know, symptoms might vary. They might get some some stomach upset um, just for the sheer reason that they're putting something into their bodies that they shouldn't be eating um, to begin with. Um, but it doesn't mean that it is um, toxic per se or that it will create severe lasting effects. Um, so I'm fairly confident in saying that Ripsalis is likely pet safe. Um, all the same, I do tend to keep my favorite plants out of her reach just to be on the safe side. Another option for those of you looking for an ASPCA approved pet safe plant, Hoya. Thankfully, <laughs> my favorite genus is also on the ASPCA non-toxic list. Um, so Again, it's one of those things where Hoya is listed, one particular Hoya species is listed on the non-toxic list, um, which is, I think it's the Carnosa compacta that's actually listed on the website. So you kind of go by implication that if one Hoya is on that list, other species of the same genus, of the Hoya genus, would likely react in your pet or with your pet in a similar way. So it is an assumption. So if you, again, if you have any questions, be sure to connect with your vet specifically about a certain type of plant. Um, but, you know, I'm fairly confident in the fact that Hoya as a whole are likely relatively harmless. Um, this is my pubicalyx, my big 
Hoya Pupacalyx. A lot of my Hoya, again, just because I really like the Hoya that I have. I tend to keep them up, kind of out of reach, just to be on the safe side, mainly for the plant's sake, um, so that, you know, they don't get knocked into or knocked over. But, Hoya. ASPCA approved. Last plant I'm going to mention on this list today of the um, pet safe plants that I recommend and have in my own home is the cast iron plant. So this awesome plant is a really good dupe or a substitute for some of those other very grand large floor plants um, that necessarily aren't going to be, you know, safe for pets, but uh, it's a really good kind of substitute for like a spathophyllum or a peace lily. Um, it has a very similar kind of growth habit and look to a spathophyllum or like an eglionema. Um, again, it doesn't really have the kind of striking colors that an eglionema would have. Um, I think you can find these variegated which would be amazing. I would snap that up in a heartbeat. Let's just add that to my wish list, uh, plant list, variegated cast iron plant. But these guys are relatively easy growers. You just wanna watch the, um, the level of dryness in the soil. You wanna make sure that you keep the soil relatively evenly uh, damp and don't let it dry out too much. Um, but again, these are pretty bulletproof um, as far as plants go. They um, can take pretty good, pretty substantially low light conditions, um, and yeah, they're real, you know low humidity conditions also. Um, the only thing I would recommend is watching the watering. But I have this plant sitting right next to my couch back here, where that lamp is, like right behind the lamp. Um, so it is fully within hound dog's reach. Um, I'm not worried about it because this is on that magical list that helps me sleep at night. <laughs> so yeah, cast iron plant. Definitely recommend if you're looking for something pet safe and relatively easy to take care of. You wanna do an outro with me? <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If you would like to subscribe, go ahead and do that. Um, if you would like to like the video, if you did like it, please feel free to go ahead and do that also. And from Hound Dog and me, just want to say enjoy the rest of your weekend and enjoy your plants. Do you want to be in a video today? What do you think about that? And maybe this little one will join us along the way. We'll see. It is nap time. No! Oh, where'd you go? <sighs> Found! Doesn't want to sit for the camera. Why not you come here? Can you come sit by me? Come here and sit by me. Come here. Come. Come inside. Come here. Come. Come. <laughs> I'm gonna play tug tug. This is not helping. Not helping at all. Hi, fellow people. <laughs>